This is Your Pain Game Podcast, where we talk about the game of living in and with chronic pain and trauma, getting to the heart of how to heal. I am your host, Lindsay Soprano. On the show, I plan on discussing with doctors, chronic pain patients, holistic practitioners, loved ones, and anybody that is interested in having their voice heard in the chronic pain and trauma world that we live in. I don't know about you, but I am a little bit hot and sweaty. And I am like all of the time. And I am just one of over 1 billion women who are in perimenopause or are just entering these golden doors of sweat and love and light, right? God, it's hor- it's so hard being a woman, men. But for as long as I can remember, I've never been able to truly talk openly about my body. I had zero problem using it and abusing it, but I could never really be candid and open and honest about what was going on with my bod and my health and all of that for so, so long. And that changed starting the show, which is pretty, pretty epic. But now that I am, holy geez, did those people that held me in their care over the years let me down? And as we all know, our healthcare system, at least here in the United States, is atrocious, um, especially when you live in chronic pain or you're dealing with emotional. I mean, it goes on and on. Actually, you know what? I don't even want to put that in the chronic pain department. And it's beyond unaffordable and beyond frustrating. And quite frankly, it's beyond healthy, right? Because we're seeking and we're, we're, we're looking for answers to questions. And I feel like we're all kind of getting left behind. And taking care of our bods in a healthy and communicative way is expensive. Like I said, like send you to collections for the bills that you are unable to pay because of your medical expenses. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you today to my guest, Amita Sharma. Hello, darling. Amita. Thank you. Thank you for introducing me. (laughs) You're welcome. Amita is the co-founder of Nourish Doc, a global holistic wellness platform for para to post-menopausal women. She is on a mission, not unlike myself, to bring affordable wellness to every (laughs) woman in the world. Nourish Doc has designed evidence-based and culture-sensitive holistic wellness programs for women's wellness, self-care, what is that, women? What self-care? And prevention. <laughs> with menopause as a taboo globally, and like I said, with over 1 billion, that's with the B, women reaching menopause, wellness for women at this stage, which I never thought I'd be in, by the way, uh, should be at the forefront of conversation. <laughs> and that's why we are here. So, all right, I'm going to roll out the red carpet for you, babe. And I'd like to start talking about why this conversation about women's health, and specifically as we're entering perimenopause, menopause, what, why that is such an important conversation to have? And let's take it from there. Yeah, you said more than 1 billion women, actually. Uh, uh, and because we don't count the perimenopausal women, we are only counting the menopausal women, right? So anyway, we'll get to that whole thing. There are definitely more than 1 billion women. But why is it important, perimenopause? The reason is, the data is, says 80% of us over age 55 and above women have one chronic condition. If you don't, if we women do not take care of ourselves during the perimenopausal years, you were just talking about all the, you know, how atrocious our health system is. You don't want to get into that, right? <laughs> no. Chronic condition meaning diabetes, meaning even cancer in health, you know, heart health, dementia, osteoporosis, the, these things. 80% of us, more women have, the, have these chronic conditions than men. And the chronic conditions can only help if we take, start taking care of ourselves during the perimenopausal years. So it's all correlated. There's a research that's linking, that's connecting the dots between this right here, the care and the chronic conditions. I, I can just give you an example if yes, you want. Yes, please. <laughs> So like estrogen dominance, as an example, most of us don't even understand what estrogen dominance is. I I think I'm jumping too far ahead of my game. But just as an example, a a common common condition uh, that happens to a lot of perimenopausal women or even women before perimenopause has a direct correlation to breast cancer and uh, uh, ovarian cancer. As an example, hormonal imbalance, which happens towards women, 
most of the women in perimenopause could be linked to diabetes. Weight gain that happens to most of the perimenopausal women can again be linked to diabetes or metabolic syndrome. Bone loss that happens to a lot of women, 30 and over, we start losing our bones. We know that unless we start doing some weight trainings, osteoporosis, estrogen and uh, progesterone lowering of the hormones, osteoporosis, is the, there's a link to that. So even brain fog is one of the symptoms of perimenopause can be linked to dementia in the later years. So what I'm trying to say is the symptoms that we have, we meaning the National Institute of Health, they have uh, recorded more than 35 plus symptoms uh, of perimenopause. If we don't take care of them, if we are not proactive in taking care of ourselves, can we are leading ourselves to a, not a healthier quality of life as we start aging into our golden years. For sure. And I mean, I don't know how golden it is these days, <laughs> but I'm just I, I, one of the things that is exacerb exacerbating about this whole thing for me, it just drives me crazy, is the fact that I have been a seeker and a very curious woman in regards to finding answers to health problems for at least now 15 plus years. And I'm for, I'm going to be 46. And the, the most frustrating thing is finding out at, literally because of doing this show, meeting these incredible women and incredible men as my guests, not unlike yourself, that have taught me how left behind I was at such a very young age. Some of that is because technology has changed. We have more data. We have more information. We have more studies. We have all of that. But at the end of the day, We've all had ovaries and uteruses for a very long time. I mean, this is, I, I feel like it's not complete rocket science, but what's happened <laughs> certainly with my bod is with trauma and with things that have happened over the years of your life, um, you end up developing all these weird, you know, weird autoimmune disorders. You have chronic pain that comes into it, not unlike myself. And all of these things come in and we get thrown into one big bucket because we're women and women are all different, right? You and I spoke about that in our meet and greet. We are all so different. Well, everybody's different. Everybody is different. So can you talk to us a little bit about wellness and the holistic approach that you have in regards to treating women through our uh, towards our golden years? We are not golden right now. We are shiny and sparkly. Golden's too old. <laughs> That's golden, girls. You're making me feel really old okay. right now. So uh, I think I, I think the, in the Western culture, uh, and I think most of us in today's day and age have traveled the world globally, right? Whether it's Asia, Europe, or America. I think we can. I can safely make the statement that in the Western world, we just want one pill mm -hmm. to solve our problems, yes. right? Oh, let me just give me a pill, and then I'll be fine, right? So, so the and and you know the funny thing is, I actually went and met someone in the holistic industry, and she said, "Tell me a pill in the holistic world, and I'll be fine." I'm like, "There's no one single pill." No. That's see, <laughs> so our brain is programmed to go to the medical system, whatever, to go to a doc and doc will prescribe the pill and the pill will take the pill and we'll be perfectly fine. Right. Now, if you go visit some European countries, uh, Italy or any of you know, these countries or even Asia, you know, the, the, the f focus is on really on holistic health. The holistic health, what I mean is your physical health as well as your relationship health, your mental health, your social health, it's mind and bodies all connected. Right. Guess, guess what? If I'm having a bad relationship with my partner or with, uh, you know, someone, it's all going to translate into some kind of, I'm going to start accumulating these bad feelings in my head and I'm not letting it go. And then it's all, then it causes me anxiety and the anxiety causes me my gut issues. My gut issues calls me my poop not coming out and that goes to my weight and the belly bloating. You see, oh, you know how I've created this whole mesh of yes. how my abdominal bloating is related to my boss not getting me being happy with me. <laughs> but it's true. It's totally true. Society, yeah. like we, they, they almost traumatize us by not getting us through, helping us and handholding us through all of these things that are so important. Nutrition mm -hmm. being one of them. Our, like you're saying, our, our spirit, our soul, mm -hmm. our, all of it. It's so important that we're touching base with all of those places within our healthcare. It's not like, well, you know what? My feet hurt. So why don't I put you on a pain pill? You know what? It has absolutely nothing to do with mm -hmm. that. If anybody would have given two, you know what's mm -hmm. about it. I legitimately would have been, I don't, I would not be sitting in a wheelchair. 
for half of my life. I can tell you that much right now, but that's yeah. why we're getting out of it because this, this just stinks. <laughs> so that's why holistic health, your mind, emotional wellness is very, very important. Whatever you're going through at that time, a lot of women are going through relationship issues or divorce or so many things. It all comes into all the symptoms, the sure. physical symptoms we're talking about. And, and perimenopause, is important because guess what our women's life is also governed by menstrual health right when we start the menstrual health puberty then we're giving birth to the reproductive and the perimenopause is decline of that menstrual health right right the the, the because the first one of the first symptom of perimenopause is irregular periods right the, the periods the the two sex hormones the female sex hormones that define a feminist beauty or the feminism i should say that start slightly start going down tuck, 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 and then it goes roller coaster right now these beautiful hormones are playing this roller coaster right then these symptoms start appearing like satellites bombarding on us from all over the place and it's different for each and every woman based on their ethnicity based on their lifestyle and it's that's why we focus on the cultural sensitivity because depending on what kind of race you're coming from your menopause age could be different and your menopause symptoms could be different huh i didn't know that about about race in particular um in regards to symptoms mm -hmm. and it and its onset of perimenopause and why is that I mean, obviously, we're all a little different. We all come from all over the world. We have so different genes say, and stuff, but it, specifically, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so I'll just give you an African-American uh, women. As okay. an example, in this country, the average age of menopause is 51, 52. They experience it one or two years earlier than a normal age. And the heart flashes, which is one of the common symptoms, is, oh, my God, I'm having heart flashes. I'm going through menopause. Heart flashes is not the only symptom of menopause. It's not only about heart flashes, as I explained earlier, right? Now, they get more severe a symptom of heart flashes than normal. And that's because of the lifestyle. They don't eat as much healthy food as, mm. as, as most of us can afford to do that. Processed foods, the obesity levels are much higher and the, the exercise is lower. So these are the common factors in Latino communities and uh, African-American communities because the, sim the severity of the, some of the symptoms are higher and the age is sooner. So it differs from different cultures. I'm just giving you an example yeah. of, of these two cultures, in the, specifically in this country. Yeah, I mean, it's totally true. I mean, you can you can just see it. And you know, walking around and we look like I'm in, I'm in Southern California, so we're fairly diverse around here. And you can see it. And you can see, especially because prices have risen in food, that I think that a lot, a lot more people are eating fast food. I mean, I'm not of that ilk, but um, I see a lot of my girlfriends that feed their kids like crappy food that they didn't used to because mm -hmm. now it's so much more expensive and so all that thing kind of circles back to the affordability of our health care and how mm -hmm. how to find the right solution and to find the right practitioners and to find the right path and to pay for your acupuncture and to go get massages for your lymph nodes you know like all of these different yeah. things that we can do our healthcare system isn't going to pay for it. Yes. And, so, and that's a problem. And that's a, that's they a don't huge want problem. They don't want to. I don't, because they want us mm -hmm. sick. And, and I'm not yes. going to get on my bully, on my bully pulpit and get on my soapbox about the politics and all of this at all. Cause I try to stay away from how I really feel about it. But everybody that really listens to the show all the time <laughs> knows how I really feel about it. But it's just one of those things that I'm like, I get so discouraged for people that don't have the financial ability to support a really, really healthy, healthy lifestyle because it is it is hard work to do it. It's expensive to do it, and it's dedication to it too. And so you've been working with your um, with your other founder of your organization, Norstock. You've been working on basically affordable wellness at the palm of your hand. So can we talk a little bit about mm -hmm. what you're up to mm -hmm. because this is pretty interesting? Yeah, so I, uh, you know, I took this category of women, mid-aged women, beyond the reproductive years. The reason being, as I said, underserved, a taboo, mm -hmm. um, not well understood. All these reasons, and not much research has been done. So, so we went around the world for the last two years. That's all we've been doing, literally on Zoom, right? Not <laughs> flying around the world, and talked to about three, 
<laughs> 3,000 plus holistic experts and looked at all the research that has been done in holistic. And we brought it all together and tried to put it, not, I wouldn't say a single pill, but it definitely in an affordable app. For example, the kind of holistic therapies that we are talking about is, of course, we talked about the nutrition, food as medicine. We know that. Right. That being that very, very important. Then there is yoga has ton of research. Breathing has ton of research to help calm ourselves with heart flashes and even with a lot of menopausal, uh, perimenopausal symptoms. Acupressure has uh, research, some of the herbs and supplements, some Ayurveda massage, some type of medicated massage some type of aromatherapy, EFT, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnotherapy, image therapy. There are so many things. So what we've done is we've gone to all this, brought it all together and put it in an affordable app, which is going to be priced at less than $10 a month based on a concern a person has. We are going to give them simple tips to f go along, first of all, understanding what they have, and then a simple tips of what is it that they can do to start changing their habits on a daily basis. The trick to do that is to form a daily routine, a single day, what am I gonna do today? Maybe take one or two habits on a daily basis and start practicing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's what we have done, is that we've gone and we've taken about 15 symptoms of mid-age women, physical symptoms, as well as we're going to put in the emotional symptoms and put it in simple self-care app, which is super affordable, less than $10. Now, if someone wants a one-on-one -on -one personalized uh, consultation, then of course, it, it, it's going to be more. We know that. And then it is, you can have like a personalized holistic wellness according to what your blood work says, what your uh, symptoms are, what your emotional, like I said again and again, physical symptoms is one thing, your blood work will say something. If you don't have a good relationship with your spouse, with your partner, with your kids, with your parents, you know, that's the emotional part, you know, that is also takes into account of how you're feeling about yourself. All, the, all that put together to follow along with uh, some someone like a naturopathic doctor, a yoga therapist, a dietitian, or even a counselor, so that you know, over the next period of three to four, four months or three to five months, you start embarking on this holistic lifestyle journey. Yeah. The, I, like you said, it takes hard work, it takes commitment. But what, what are you committing at? What is the hard work for? For yourself. Yeah, it's for you. You're not doing it for anyone else. <laughs> Yeah. It's for you, right? Stop your bitching. Do it for yourself. <laughs> exactly. If you can't do it for yourself, yeah. who are you going to do it for? Yeah. And stop lecturing other go, people about the things that they need to do. Because if you're not doing it either, that drives me completely Ex batty. <laughs> exactly. Why can't you take out 15 minutes every single day and start taking some kind of a habit that will help you improve. That's right. And I'm talking about self-love, loving yourself, trusting yourself, having your self-worth, confidence, and you know, basically giving yourself permission to take care of yourself, to invest in yourself. That's what we are talking about. Taking care of yourself, not for anyone else. I know. And I am right? one of the worst. And I talk about all the time on the show because I always throw myself under the bus. I am I, I'm getting better at it, but I'm always the one on the bottom of the list and everybody else is before me. And then by the end of the day, I'm a bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, great, I've got 20 seconds for myself right now. And that's just to brush my teeth. Okay, I brushed my teeth longer than 20 seconds, but you get my point. But one of the things that I think it, in, in this stage of our life as women in particular is there's a sadness and a loss that comes during this span of time where we're kind of losing like, like our mojo, like your sex drive drops, which I never thought would ever happen because I'm like a lunatic in the bedroom. And then it's like, but now I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, can we just watch more Game of Thrones over again tonight instead? You know, and so there, there's sadness with some of that and the decline of things that used to be really exciting for us or our bodies used to feel a certain way and they're just not anymore. And then if you topple that, you, you have a nice tango with chronic pain on top of that, then you've got some depression issues that come up with that. Then you've got anxiety. Then you pile on the, what you were talking about, about your, maybe a spouse issue or a job issue. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And so no wonder we're hot and sweaty and we're grumpy and we're crabby. And 
we're like literally like scraping by because we've given so much of ourselves for so many years. And now here we are like, so now what do I do? So with that, yeah, yeah, and we need people to help, uh, help hold our hands through it, but we all don't have the, the Mm -hmm. amount of patience that we used to have because there's so many resources. There's so much technology. There's so many, there's so much noise coming at us all day, all day long, all night long, Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, no matter what you're, you're being fed information. If your eyes and your ears are open And that is a challenge to our health as well. But when you have a tool like yourself, like what you're, what you guys are doing, I think that's incredibly useful, especially for somebody that's, you know, successful women that are just like, I need to get a grip on what is going on with my bod and no one is listening to me and I don't know where to go because I've gone from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor and nobody's really talking to each other. Nobody's listening to each other. And I'm giving you a, a stack this big of all of the charts of all of the things you think any of these doctors are going to look through them no they're not they never did when it was one page why would they look through it when it's 120 pages you know it's like what the hell <laughs> and that's where you guys come in how cool you know i'm not against doctors but the thing the way our medical system is set up is we have a doctor like for each and every body part right, right? Yeah, yeah. this part of the body then the nose yes. and you know <laughs> yeah. then this then this then this so now they, they, they compartmentalize our body into like God knows hundred different piece, pieces <laughs> yeah. and have hundred different specialties of doctors and, and they don't talk to each other. Yep. So, so recently, you know, I got my blood tested, uh, blood tested and, and I, everything was fine. I always have a low blood pressure. So I went to the doctor. I said, let me do this exercise, right? Let me just go to a medical doctor and and then I will go to a naturopathic doctor. And he says, oh, why your blood pressure is down? I don't understand. Oh, maybe I'll give you a pill. I said, no, no, no. I don't want a pill. Oh, my God. So so (laughs) then they said, no, why don't you go to an endocrinologist, uh, uh, right? So he sends me to that one. He, He can't figure it out. I said, I've always had my blood pressure lower. He said, no, I can't figure out. Maybe something else is going on with your heart. Then I got my heart tested. Right. I'm not kidding you. I, 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 got, I said, let me just go through this. I got my heart tested, ECG, everything normal. Then I said, oh, no, get your mammograms, get your full X-rays, get your this. I got everything tested. Mm-hmm. They could, still couldn't figure out why this was the problem. And then I went to a naturopathic doctor and, you know, she says, look, the reason is, okay, you take these herbs, you take these supplements, you take all this, and then let's see the difference. So the jury is still out there. What I'm trying to say is that the medical system treats you as one part here and there, the holistic system, like for example, not naturopathic doctor, which are licensed in this country for at least 20, 25 states in this country, they are taught the body is one system. It's not your kidneys separate from liver and and your ovaries are going here and this is going there. They consider the one whole system as one and your mind is connected to your body. So your body is the ailments that are happening are due to some kind of a possible other things that are also happening in your life and also your gut health. So it's all interconnected. That's what is so important for us to understand and learn because if my gut is wrong, my gut health is not good. My mental ish, gut and mental is all connected. I'm going to have anxiety, right? If I have anxiety, then maybe something else will start happening. My skin will start breaking out. My, I, maybe I start losing my hair. So it's all interconnected. It's not that I'll go to a skin doctor and then he'll fix my skin and I go to a gut health and then I go to my brain doctor, right? There are three doctors here, but no, it's all interconnected. And that's exactly what we are trying to say. Your mind and body is connected. You're one. You're not like 100 pieces of different doctors in you, inside your body yeah. that you need to figure it out, right? We are a puzzle with many pieces, but at the end of the day, when we're all put together, we're one big puzzle. So it's like that. the worst thing is when you lose a piece, mm-hmm. you're like, what? great I can't finish this thing yes. um but I do have I do have a cure for your low blood blood pressure would you like to hear it oh you do I do yes it's hanging out with me for 20 minutes a day <laughs> that'll raise anybody's blood pressure <laughs> People, people tell me, why are you smiling all the time? I say, I have low blood pressure. Oh my God, I'm smiling all the time because I'm crazy. <laughs> well, and also, you know, big picture, even though life has dished me a lot of shit, big picture, 
I'm a pretty damn happy person. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I, I've been through a lot. I've seen some pretty yeah. dark yeah. and twisty places in my life and I don't have a perfect life by any stretch and I struggle and I uh, challenges yeah. in my face, not only with my health, but mental health as well. And, you know, it, it's, it's mm-hmm. mostly depression and anxiety from being in pain all day long. You know I mean? It's just like the slippery slope of that. Yeah. But I feel like I'm on the right yeah. path now where I didn't really feel like I had a path because I didn't have one person that was helping guide me. And now I do. And she's just kind of rock starring me and getting me connected with this person and that person and do this and do that. And then making sure that all of those things are happening, taking all of the tests that I've done and taking and giving me some new tests. I just got ordered two new tests today. Let's just throw more pee and poop and blood at the labs it's all I do to help figure out how we can fix a lot of these infections that I have that have been sitting in my bod for so many years Mm -hmm. unknown but uh, undiagnosed but known wholeheartedly by me and me saying you're missing something you're missing something you're missing something the whole time they weren't missing anything they weren't caring And they weren't curious enough about it. And when you have people like yourself and and doctors that really do look at you as an entire human being and not just your nose and your eyeballs, Mm -hmm. but look at you as a whole woman, a whole man, your health can shift pretty swiftly if you pay attention and you do the work. And the work doesn't necessarily have to be that hard, but it needs to be a commitment that you make to yourself and to others around you. Because if you don't tell other people that you're doing what you're doing, then no one's going to hold you accountable either. And that's something that I had to learn. I'm like, okay, I'm going to not drink vodka again. All right. Well, that was easy. I just <laughs> stopped doing it. And I, but I told everybody I was doing it. Reason was, is I just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, do I love my red wine? Yeah. I do. Did I stop drinking red wine? Yeah, I did that, you know, a couple months ago. So it's just been like one of those things. I do. Mm-hmm. I want to eat cheese anymore. I shouldn't because of my gut. That was the hardest thing I've ever done mm-hmm. in my entire bloody life was yeah. stop eating cheese. That was it. That's the hardest thing I've ever yeah. done. Pain. Pff, oh my God. Vodka. Nah. Cheese. Holy hell. I need to be in therapy every day because <laughs> of not eating cheese. <laughs> and these are the things what, what you are just doing to yourself is changing one habit at a time. That's yep. exactly what I was saying. Yep. Yep. And, and, it, and it's, it's so much less daunting because, you know, that, it's super cliche, but it's the whole you don't eat an elephant at the same time. You know, you have to eat it bite by bite. And that's what it is. It's like even with weight loss, right, where people want to lose weight and then they make their decision and they put their yoga pants on and they go for a walk for 45 minutes and they weighed themselves in the morning and they ate really good in the day. And the next day they're like, why am I not 20 pounds lighter? <laughs> Because it just doesn't work that way. (laughs) So it takes a little bit of time. But if you do a little bit each day, I find that you see these small but incremental changes in your life that are pretty beautiful um, if you pay attention and you start being more curious about your own health as well as the health of the others around you, you know, and philosophically as well. Because it's a philosophical mm-hmm. thing to believe that our body as a whole, uh, it needs to be approached from a holistic perspective. Not everybody believes the same as you and I. Clearly, 25 <laughs> states in the United States of America, that's it? I'm actually fairly surprised yeah. it's actually as high as it is, and that's gross. But, wow, so 50% mm-hmm. of our, well, that kind of shows about our divide in our country, doesn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man. So, okay. So your app is, is, has it launched it or is it coming out? I'm sorry. I don't remember. It's coming out in a month by okay. end of March. Okay. Yeah. So we're just doing a final a QA. Like I said, it's uh, mainly geared towards a mid-aged woman. Uh, we have focused on perimenopausal symptoms and uh, not only the physical, but also the emotional part, because we feel that mid-aged women are go- have so many stressors uh, that are happening at that time, you know, maybe teenage kids uh, at home stress, work stress, you need the money, financial uh, relationship issues, you know, with your partner, and then the physical uh, part, which we were talking about, some of the, uh, you know, irregular periods start showing up, you would have heart flashes, sleep issues. So there are multiple things. It's not just one physical thing. No. So, so the app would come out end of March. Yes. I app, love it. So many problems, but uh, app, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I check like 92 of your 95 <laughs> issues. 
Um, but hey, I've always been an overachiever. So, you know, why quit now? Okay, so end of March, that is incredible. And you can, we can find you online at nourishdoc.com. N O U R I S H D O C.com. You're also on Instagram, nourishdoc, Facebook, YouTube, mm-hmm. all of those things. So check her out and take a peek. Um, we will be following what's going on with her launch and get that information out to you guys as well. But is there anything else that you'd like to leave our audience with? No, I think I think I said it. I think the only thing is, you know, we invest some time in yourself. That I think that's my biggest line, the biggest thing that I want to tell each and every woman, even uh, men as well, that invest 10 to 15 minutes of time to yourself and invest how you can improve yourself, your mind and body. And that's really your holistic self is what I'm talking about. Not only your physical health, your looks, but I'm talking about the holistic life. Sure. And that's what I want to uh, leave. I love it. I love it so much. And it's a message that we all need to hear and frequently, mind you, because it's real easy to slip back into old habit. It's real easy to be like, I'll do that tomorrow. We all binge television shows for hours. Okay. We can do 10 to 15 minutes for ourselves. That's not watching Game of Thrones or not watching the news or what have us. We have to carve out a little bit more time for ourselves. And thank you for helping to reiterate that message because we talk about it a lot here. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. You are exclusively invited to share this holistic VIP pain journey together. Let's get to the heart of how to heal with you by my side. Let's connect and hear stories of your strength and your grit. I'm here. Everybody that's been a guest on my show is here for you. Reach out to us. We would love to talk with you. If you've got questions, concerns, or you're interested in being a guest on the show for all I know, please reach out to us. Let's connect. Please follow the Pain Game Podcast wherever you digest your podcast content. We'll be there. Visit us at thepaingamepodcast.com and follow us on all the socials. Thanks for listening, my little VIPs. Catch you on the other side. (laughs) 